Hello and welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton and I've been the editor since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified THX and ISF calibrator with over 17 years of experience. In today's video we're looking at the Philips OLED 754 4K OLED TV. If you like our reviews and want to see more of them while supporting our channel, please like and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell to be informed every time we upload new video content. You can also read the full in-depth review at AV forums with slightly more performance information and don't forget to check out the TV forums at Europe's largest AV community on AV forums to see what owners of this TV think about it after normal use in their own homes. The Philips OLED 754 is the entry point to the OLED TVs from the company, but it is still a fully featured TV set with all the current available HDR formats supported. It's available in 55 and 65 inch screen sizes and features the Safi smart TV system instead of Android which is found on the higher models in the range, and this is powered by a quad core processor. The 754 features the latest P5 Perfect Picture engine which is a powerful upscaler and video processor. Which can add features such as perfect natural motion frame interpolation and other noise reduction and colour enhancing features. There is also the perfect natural reality processing that claims to turn SDR content into HDR like images. Thankfully for purists there are also more accurate picture modes although the 754 does drop the ISF C3 day and night modes as well as the colour management system which is found on the higher models. Just like the other OLED TVs from Philips this year, the OLED 754 features both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision Dynamic Metadata HDR systems as well as HDR10 and Hybrid Log Gamma HLG. This allows the 754 to display all the currently used HDR standards on TV streaming and disc formats. It also sports a three-sided ambilight that allows users to select a different number of programs for the lighting behind the TV. The 754 does lack the ISF setting found on other OLED models from Philips, but you can still use a static light which is close enough to be used as a bias light. All the other settings involve the lights following the action on screen or the music or audio and this turns your living room into a 1970s disco. And while the lights following the movie action is cool for a few minutes, it soon becomes distracting and tiring. At the time of this review, in April 2020, the OLED 754 can be purchased for around £989 through a number of retailers. The OLED 754 is what you would expect design-wise from Philips and looks very much like the OLED 804 model in that respect. It's a simple rectangular design with two small chrome 90 degree bars that are used as stands and which lifts the screen a few millimetres above the mounting surface. It's elegant and minimalist with a stylish feel and it uses high quality metals and plastics giving it a sturdy and well built feel. There is no sound bar with the OLED 754, but it does sport downward firing stereo speakers and a subwoofer and two passive radiators positioned on the rear of the panel, with 40 watts total power for the sound system. While it doesn't reach the same levels as the Bowers and Wilkins sound on other OLED Plus models, it is perfectly functional for normal living room use. Around the back of the 754 are the three strips of LEDs for the three-sided Ambilight system and the connections are to the right when looking from the rear. They are split between sideways and downwards facing locations with a CI slot, USB 3.0 and 2.0 slots along with HDMI 3 and 4 and a headphone jack and these are all sideways facing. Downwards we have HDMI 1 and 2 with ARC on HDMI 1, TV and satellite antennas, breakouts for legacy audio and video connections with digital audio out and ethernet sockets. All HDMI ports support full bandwidth 18 gigabits per second 4K 44460p with HLG, HDR10, HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision compatibility. The remote control supplied with the 754 is a similar Philips design from previous models although it loses the QWERTY keyboard on the rear. It's a standard size plastic affair with the main directional and menu keys to the top and direct Netflix and Rakuten TV buttons next to the channel and volume rockers. Overall it fits neatly in the hand and is intuitive to use. <laughs> The 
As we always do with our reviews, we measure the out-of-the-box picture presets to find those that get as close as possible to the industry standards. The idea is that a TV must get close to these standards in at least one of its picture modes so end users can see content as it was mastered and intended to be seen. There are no ISF picture modes on the OLED 754 so the closest preset to match the industry standards is the movie preset. We also set colour temperature to warm and the gamma slider to match 2.4 for dark room viewing. We switched off all the other picture processing modes which detract from presenting the image as intended including motion smoothing. Looking at the grayscale we can see that the blue is constant with a slight rise in green as the scale gets brighter and red dips slightly. However, our Delta E errors are under the visible threshold of 3 and we have no visible errors on screen with film or TV content. Gamma is also tracking close to 2.4 with slight dips here and there. Overall, for an out-of-the-box preset, the grayscale results are very accurate. Moving to the Rec. 709 HD colour gamut, we're not as lucky and we have some major errors with the gamut being too wide. The issue we have is that the saturation tracking is actually following the wide colour gamut points and not those for Rec. 709 HD content. There's no CMS on the 754 and this could point out why the tracking is so wide of the actual targets. As it is, with on-screen film and TV content there are errors visible with colour, especially skin tones which can look a little bit too rosy and tanned with some content. If you're looking for accuracy to the Rec. 709 gamut then the Philips misses this by some margin and this is a shame. There are no ISF modes on the OLED 754 and as such we lose some of the ISF C3 controls, namely the Colour Management System or CMS. This means that we will not be able to correct the Rec. 709 colour gamut but we still have two point grayscale controls. Looking at the grayscale, we were able to flatten off the tracking perfectly and get Delta E errors down to 1 and below which is well below the visible threshold of 3. Gamma was also there or thereabouts at 2.4 with just a few dips in the tracking so overall it's very accurate indeed. Sadly, as there is no CMS system on the 754, we were unable to correct the wide tracking which was well over the Rec. 709 HD standard and it was pointing towards P3 wide colour. This did have an effect on the colour performance with normal SDR HD material looking too hot with colours. We guess Philips had to cut corners and they've decided to go with wide colour over accuracy here. The Philips 754 measures 610 nits at 1, 2 and 5% window sizes and 605 nits at the industry standard 10% window size. It also dropped off sharply as more of the screen brightens up with an aggressive automatic brightness limiter. This circuit drops brightness down to 97 nits on a full 100% white screen. This ABL drop is seen within some HDR content where there is a sudden change to an image with a large amount of brightness over a large section of the screen. Oddly, it also does the same with some SDR content. Looking at the PQ EOTF results and the Philips 754 defaults to the HDR perfect minimum for HDR playback and this has a roll off that's designed to display as much specular highlight detail as possible before it clips using dynamic tone mapping. As you can see it follows the ST2084 standard rolling off smoothly trying to retain as much specular detail as possible given the capabilities of this TV. While the colour gamut results for Rec. 709 were disappointing as they were too wide for that standard, it's clear to see that Philips was going for wide colour gamut results here as the tracking towards DCI-P3 within Rec. 2020 is decent on the budget 754. It's not quite perfect with magenta hues and some undersaturation at other points but overall it is a good attempt to cover as much of the wide gamut giving the inherent colour volume deficiencies of OLED. We measured BT2020 at 71% XY and 76% UV with P3 coming in at 95% XY and 98% UV. Despite being a budget model, the 754 was able to put together an excellent performance that very few displays in the same price bracket would be able to match. 
it has all the superb attributes of an OLED TV with deep blacks, superb shadow details and very strong contrast. HDR looks incredibly dynamic and colourful on the 754. Panel uniformity was good with no obvious panel banding at 5% stimulus and full white also looks clean with no signs of dirty screen effect at any brightness level. ABL is aggressive in both SDR and HDR image modes. Motion performance is good with no obvious induced shudder with 24 frames per second material and correct pull down is applied when the motion style is set to movie. You can also set this to off to achieve correct motion with other viewing material and we measured around 350 lines on this moving pattern with no image smoothing applied and around 600 lines with frame interpolation added at full. Care should be taken when using motion settings as the higher the setting the more artifacts we observe within material. Thanks to the P5 image processing engine upscaling is excellent with HD TV channels and HD Blu-ray along with streaming also looking nice and sharp with good line definition and no obvious signs of edge ringing within content. SDR content for the most part looks good with excellent blacks and good shadow detailing and decent motion. Colours are a little oversaturated and with some content it's very noticeable in skin tones that look a little bit too red. It's also noticeable with sports for example with pitches looking a little bit too green. It's with HDR where the 754 excels in terms of picture quality with superb image dynamics and accurate looking colours and skin tones. HDR10 static metadata material looks good with excellent image depth, shadow details and good highlights. Some specular highlights are clipped in the extreme, but for the majority of 1000 and 4000 nit content, the tone mapping is very good. Colours are also well saturated, with skin tones looking natural. The OLED 754 also accepts HDR10 Plus content and will display that it is using the format on screen. The same is true for Dolby Vision, which is best set to the dark preset to see content as intended. Dolby Vision Bright on the 754 adds in a lot of Philips P5 processing, including image smoothing, which is against the creator's intentions. So just be aware if you want to use the bright mode to switch all the processing off. Dolby Vision is the best current format being used on the 754 with superb detail retrieval in the specular highlights which are clipped away in the HDR10 and HDR10 Plus versions of the same content. Image brightness also remains strong with no overall dulling of the image in Dolby Vision dark mode which should be viewed in a light controlled environment. HDR is the strong point of the Philips 754 OLED TV and it offers excellent value for money for those looking for such a display. Gaming performance is a little lacking on the Philips when compared to its rivals, especially LG. Input lag was measured on a Leo Bodner tester at 33 milliseconds, which will be slow for those used to fast paced games requiring fast inputs. The Philips OLED 754 presents a lot of positives including the price point to make it appealing to many general users. Those looking for absolute accuracy for SDR content and good gaming capabilities will be better looking elsewhere, but also at a higher price point. However, if image accuracy and fast gaming are not high on your agenda and you want to take advantage of the full on P5 image processing, then the OLED 754 offers superb value for money. There is no better image processing on the market at the moment that betters the P5 engine and you will be able to create bright, vivid and incredibly smooth images that have enhanced sharpness. It's not for the purists, but we know that many readers and viewers are happy enough to watch their TVs in the bright standard and vivid modes and nobody does those better than Philips. HDR is a strong point with the 754 at the price point with good peak brightness performance married to Dolby Vision and HDR10 plus dynamic metadata with excellent dynamic tone mapping for HDR10 content. The only other item to mention is the Safi Smart TV system and the quad core processing driving this. It's not as fast as higher end TV models with WebOS and Tizen or even the current Philips Android TVs. The lag in button press to something actually happening is a fraction longer in use but everything does eventually work as it's supposed to. Apps are responsive once up and running and we had no technical issues at all with the system in daily use. 
Overall, the Philips OLED 754 will suit the larger general market and is a very good buy at its current price point of £989 in April 2020. If you're looking for image accuracy for SDR or fast gaming response, you will need to look elsewhere, but for everyone else, the TV certainly makes a compelling case for itself and the price tag will appeal to the majority. It's an OLED TV designed to hit a price point and offer the best possible performance with that in mind, and in this case it certainly succeeds and it comes recommended.